Hi friends, I am Neil. Welcome back to the channel, and thank you for all the support. Please like and subscribe if you can, as we are very close to 1k. Today we are going to continue with Syria's story. Let's begin. Chapter 30. The Duke, while embracing Syria, told her that he felt that his wife was about to die. Syria, while hugging him back, reassured him that she hadn't gone anywhere. She told him that it wouldn't do him any good if he smothered her to death after she managed to escape unscathed. The Duke responded that if she had died, he would have buried alive every single one of the nobles who sent the request for her. This statement shocked Syria. She raised her head and looked at the Duke lovingly. He informed her that he had gone to such lengths to save her for the first time. Hearing all the whispers coming from the knights, Syria informed the Duke to quit his actions as there were many people present here, but the Duke was unbothered and told her that everyone knew that they both were married. Cullis, with a saddened look on his face, wondered when the two of them had come so close. Suddenly, Lena's shout can be heard. She called for Khalees and asked him what happened to his arm. All the other priests could be seen following her, asking her not to be here and to return to her position at once, disregarding their pleas. Lena asked Khalees if he was hurt and asked him what happened. The Duke, looking in her direction, commented that she was really out of her mind and questioned how a stern can abandon her place in the formation. Grabbing hold of Lena, the priests directed her towards her original position while one of them attended to heal Khalees. The high priest could be seen having a conversation with Lena. He informed her that while it is true that she has yet to receive formal training, the priests have spent their entire spare moments teaching her as much as they can. Lena can be seen slumping down and meekly responding that Calais was hurt, with a frustrated look on his face. The high priest told her that sterns play an integral role in battles against monsters, no matter what happens. Under no circumstances should she stray from the knights in their astral armor, and she certainly cannot abandon her position for the sake of a single knight, no matter the nature of their relationship. He was already tired, as he has explained countless times. He questioned her, what would have happened if one of the knights had, God forbid, frozen to death because she abandoned her station? While sobbing because that is the only thing she can do, Lena asked for his forgiveness and told him that she hadn't thought things through. While leaving the tent, the priest mentioned that they have to formulate a plan that should allow them to deal with all the remaining monsters tomorrow and ordered her to try to control herself for at least one day. Lena can be seen. Greeting her teeth and wondering what she did that was so wrong, she claimed that Syria would have done the same thing if she were in her place. She wondered why she was being treated like this. Wiping her tears, she blamed both Syria and the high priest and promised to make them feel just as horrible as she does right now. BB can be seen battling the monsters alone. Looking back, she is wondering if she has moved too far from the area. One of the knights with her cautioned her that a monster was on her right. Turning around, she thought that there was nothing there, but suddenly a monster came near her, but she was lucky enough to dodge it and kill it. She felt something was off for some time now. Throwing her sword, she reached the knight and asked him, what was he scheming? The knight, surprised by her accusation, asked her what she meant. Grabbing the knight by the collar, she picked him up and asked him directly why he kept driving her farther and farther away from the stern while pretending to help when he was doing nothing. She suddenly realized that this rogue knight had been practically glued to the saint's side earlier. She asked him if Lena had put him up to this. Lena can be seen merrily and happily frolicking around, wondering if that paladin is doing what she asked. It is shown that earlier she went and asked for the paladin's assistance with something, and the soldier was only happy to assist her, thinking she is the saint and the savior. She smiled to herself, she thought only if everyone in the world was as nice or stupid as him. Suddenly, the duke can be seen exiting his tent while they cross paths their hands brushed each other, and Lena felt a spark and wondered what the feeling was. Just then the duke also felt something weird, he stopped calling Saint Lena and asked her to explain why she did that to him. 
Nervously, Lena explained that she didn't do anything at all. With anger in his face, he questioned if she really didn't do anything and then showed her a rather large gash on his arm. He asked her to explain why Lena was nervous now, but she protested that she didn't do such a thing, not wanting to waste his time. Looking at her face, he requested her and prayed that she would not vex him any further in the future, which made her flinch, squeezing her arm. She wondered what he was so afraid of and was happy with the choice she made. She began laughing within the ominous aura around her, thinking Calais is definitely the better of the two. Yeah, bitch, go and die with Callus. Better jump from a cliff together. Chapter 31 Lena was called to the tent where High Priest Amos was staying. When she entered, she was shocked to see BB the Knight and Sirius sitting together, along with the High Priest. She wondered how this happened and if he got caught. Breaking her thought, the High Priest asked Lena whether she sent this paladin to interfere with Sarah Abigail. The Knight can be seen trembling in fear. As stupid as she is, she began trembling and defending herself. She stated that it was because she just wanted to make the High Priest understand. The High Priest was extremely angry with her and asked her what she meant by that. Lena, crying and sobbing, answered that she just wanted to show him how anyone could abandon their position for the sake of someone they care about. I don't know, guys, how stupid someone can be. Even Syria was wondering what the hell she was saying, she was actually the one who drove BB beyond the stern's range of protection because of something so pretty petty. She is well aware that a knight could die because of that. Having none of that nonsense, the high priest informed her that he would stand no more for any of this. He informed Lena that he had already told her that if she could provide a month of service to the high church, he would personally see to it that she was taken to the capital. Maybe he should take her to the hospital and get her mind checked, but now that he has retracted that promise, from this point forward, she will have to stay with the high church. Lena was shocked and shouted that she hates the high church. Springing from where he was sitting, the high priest screamed back at her, saying that she places much importance on avoiding anything she happens to dislike yet treats a knight's very life with an astonishing flippancy. Lena protested by saying that it does not matter if she is dead or not, as she had heard once that BB was imprisoned. The high priest ordered her not to insult a stern's personal knight. Lena can be seen crying and running away, screaming that they don't know anything. All she wanted to do was show him the truth. The high priest could be seen calling out her name, but she didn't respond, and all that made him sigh, wanting to ease the situation. Syria requested that the high priest allow her to speak to the saint. The saint could be seen sitting on the ground a bit far away, thinking that it's all too much as she is supposed to be a precious stern, but all everyone ever does is scold her. She is wondering what she has done wrong and she claims that the one who stole her place is more to blame. Right then, an image of the circlet can be seen. An image of that necklace can be seen floating in the air, which startles her. A voice can be heard saying that it needs more divine power. She is thinking that she needs more divine power. It's as if she were being hypnotized. The necklace called out to her and asked her to take hold of it. As Lena grabbed the necklace, ominous light, almost like vines, and dark shadows could be seen engulfing her and entering her through her mouth. Syria, looking at that, was scared and called out her name, but it was too late, the darkness had already entered her by then, and she stomped down into the ground. Syria wondered if Lena had just absorbed the darkness. As soon as she had finished absorbing the dark energy, she began running away. Syria was scared, and she thought of informing and alerting the high priest. In the meantime, the duke can be seen sitting in the tent talking to a priest. He exclaimed that Lena continues to find ways to make a nuisance of herself, as if attempting to kill a Stern's knight was not sufficient, now she has run off as well. He wonders if this is some kind of joke. He looks at the priest and asks him what he wants from him. The priest apologizes and asks for the knight's assistance as this is a grief matter. The duke asked about the high priest and questioned what he was doing. 
The priest answered that as soon as the high priest understood the urgency of the situation, he went out in search for the saint with Stern. Upon hearing that the high priest went with Syria to find Lena, he was furious, which made Elliot flinch. He questioned whether Celia went out to search on her own. In the next scene, we can see the high priest and Syria following the trail where she left Lena previously. The high priest asks Syria if she is certain that the saint went that way, and Syria confirms that she has definitely been in this direction. The high priest told her that no matter how much he tries to instruct her, things always end up like this, the high priest could be seen calling out Lena's name and asking if she could hear his voice. Syria was wondering if it definitely looked like demonic shadows, but she was also wondering if she was trying to purify the darkness or absorb it. She was unclear, as nothing of the sort has happened in the story. Suddenly, they could see Lena in front of them. Upon seeing Lena, they called out for her, but she told them not to come any closer as she hadn't done anything wrong. To calm the situation, the priest told her that they knew that she hadn't done anything wrong and asked her to return to camp. He calmly told her that if she deserted her position, there would be no end to trouble. Syria was wondering if she should let the high priest know what she saw earlier. Suddenly, a big monster could be seen coming behind from Lena Syria, concerned, asked for the high priest's attention and begged him to look out. Chapter 32 the Duke, Abigail, and the rest of the knights could be seen frantically searching for Syria and the high priest, Amos. At the time the Duke was wondering where Syria had gone, Khalees was also with them, searching for the missing people. He came to the Duke, asking if there was any trace of Syria. Clenching his fist on the saddle, he told Khalees that he believes she is not the one he should be worried about at that moment. He asked if he and the saint lacked all capacity to reason even after dragging the archduchess to such a dangerous place. Looking at him menacingly, he asks just how many times he plans to stir up trouble. He stated that when he returns to the castle, Callus will be dealt with accordingly. A knight came running towards them, shouting for help as a monster appeared. The monster can be seen coming from behind Lena, growling. High Priest Amos called for Lena, reaching out his hands and asking her to come towards him to safety, but at the exact moment the monster, instead of attacking Lena, jumped onto the High Priest and grabbed him under its claws. Even at the brink of death, he called for Lena and asked her to save herself. The sounds of bones crashing could be heard as blood poured out of his limp body, splattering onto Lena's face. Looking at this serious situation, Celia also called out to Lena asking her to run away as the monster was about to attack her. The duke came running and, with a quick slash with his sword, attacked the monster, it fell down with a thud. Directly looking at Lena, the duke told her that he had already asked her not to make a nuisance of herself. Lena was about to thank him but dropped because of the situation, and at that exact moment, the moon became scarlet as Lena was thanking him. Light could be seen emanating from the moon as both of them looked towards it. Syria called out for the duke while Khalees and the others shouted Lena's name. As Lena was being pulled back to the moon by the wisps of yellow light surrounding her, she screamed for the duke to save her. She begged for him to save her, saying not yet, and at the last moment, when only her hands were visible, she called the duke by his name, asking him to save her as she slowly vanished. I hope she stays wherever she is right now. Duke was shocked, as he had never seen such a thing happen in front of him. He called out the saint's name. Syria, on the other hand, was very shocked and thought that this was the second time this had happened. In the story, Lena travels to and from her own world several times, passing through the moon. The first time it happens, it is so inconsequential that it only takes up a line or two in the novel, but the second disappearance is a different not only does it take her a year before she is able to return, but most importantly, it makes Rush and Khalees realize their love for her, which they were oblivious to before the devil. It starts the beginning of the main storyline, the one she has been so desperately trying to avoid. The location and the circumstances of a disappearance are all completely different, just like last time, except for one thing, the pose the two of them were in just now was very similar to one in the novel. 
The Rush called out Syria's name upon seeing her, but she was wondering what she could do right now. She thought she had no choice but to watch as the events of the story played out. Was it truly impossible? She wondered if she could avoid the future in which the two of them fall in love and she dies. Chapter 33 We see Celia entering the high priest's tent. All the other priests were sobbing due to their loss. One of the saints thanked Syria for coming and also told her that since a stern such as herself has prayed for the repose of the high priest's soul, he must now be at peace within God's embrace. The duke called for Syria, asking what she was doing there. Syria told him that she was here to place a lock of her hair in the high priest's coffin. She has heard that doing so benefits the deceased. The duke requested that she allow him to place it inside for her, as it was not the most pleasant sight. The duke placed the lock of her hair on the high priest's coffin and closed it. When she left the tent, she saw that everyone was in a miserable state. She guessed that it's hardly surprising that everyone is demoralized because Lena was missing and the high priest is now dead. The high priest, Amos, was a very strict person in the novel, but he was really good to her. She wondered if he also died in the story but couldn't remember. As far as she could recall, it wasn't even in this area that Lena disappeared, she had followed the duke to the frozen lake back in House Burke's dominion when it really happened out of nowhere. Duke felt guilty for both causing the incident and being unable to save her when she was right in front of him. That guilt casually changed over the course of the year while she was gone, which eventually turned into blind love for her. Nervously, Syria asked if he was feeling any sort of guilt about what had happened. The Duke asked her what she was talking about. He asked whether she was talking about herself. Syria, wanting to change the topic, told him not to think about it as it was an upsetting question and to forget that she even asked. The Duke replied, how could he be upset when he hasn't even heard the full question? He asked her to continue. Gathering up her nerves, Syria asked him if he was feeling any sense of guilt towards St. Lena. The Duke replied that it was such an absurd question to hear, so he thought it must be directed at someone else. He told her that he had trouble understanding her and asked her why he should feel that way. Siri replied that since he was unable to save her when she was right in front of him, it is not that she blames him. The Duke, sensing what she was trying to say, questioned her if she was worried that he might be plagued by a sense of guilt. Syria answered more or less. The Duke brushed her hair from her forehead and quickly pressed it, telling Celia that it explains why she has been looking so troubled. Pulling up her head, Rush replied that her eyebrows were raised just like that. Looking in another direction, she replied that her eyebrows were always like that. He replied back that he can often discern how she's feeling based on her expression alone, but knowing what she's thinking is another matter. He stated that Saint was the one who chose to run out of the camp, it is not that he forced her to leave, so there is no reason for him to feel that he's at fault. Celia wondered why he was saying that because that's exactly how he is supposed to realize his true love and feelings for her because that's how the story was written. Now she is really at a loss. She has been trying so hard to alter the storyline, but no matter what she does, everything somehow ends up following the flow of the original story. And what's worse is that her efforts have now led to the death of an innocent person. Someone called her and gave her a drink. It was a little girl. She expressed that it was a drink in honor of the departed. Syria thanked that little priest. She realized that, in the end, she couldn't even offer a proper response previously. The Duke informed her to get ready as they would be leaving for the castle, as it appears that the high priest's death was quite a shock to her. Celia wondered if he was offended and if she should go and apologize. As she was going to drink the drink, someone's hand could be seen obstructing her. It was Khalees, he asked Syria not to drink that and passed her a flask instead. Syria sternly told him to return her goblet and tried returning the flask back to him, but Calais apologized and informed her that she could not as she is allergic to wild strawberries. The drink that was given to her was made with wild strawberries. 
Khalees stated that she can do whatever she wants with the flask and asked her not to return it. As he was leaving, she followed him a bit, asking where he was going and asking him to take it back, or else she would just throw it. Elliot came from behind, informing her that he had finished loading the carriage and had come to fetch her. He requested that she begin making her way to the tent, but also questioned where the flask came from. She quickly responded that some beggar gave it to her. Looking at the canteen, Elliot asked whether it was Khalees who gave it. Elliot responded that it has Hanaton's crest marked on the flask, which Syria was unaware of. Quickly passing it to Elliot, she told him that he can do whatever he wants with it, as if she were caught with this, it would have started a scandal. Elliot asked her what was inside the flask. Syria responded that it was wild strawberry wine, but she could not drink it because she's allergic. Elliot responded that the Archduke would not be too pleased if he heard of this. When asked why the Duke would be mad, Elliot changed the topic and told her he understood why the Duke always wants an escort with her. Celia protested that she barely even spoke to Callus. With that, she called the little girl and asked her if she could pass the flask to Callus. The girl took it with great enthusiasm and told her that she would deliver it at once. A hand reached out and took the flask out of Syria's hand, asking, what are they planning to deliver and to whom? In a low voice, calling out her name, he asks her if that fool Khalees has been flirting with her again. LOL Syria knew that she had failed at hiding the incident. What is Syria's fate? Can she live her life without getting killed? To know all that, please subscribe to my channel and comment Syria in the comments section below, as this is the end of this segment of the video. I hope all you guys are great. I will see you friends on the next video. Liking and subscribing really helps my channel and me so thank you very much.